Okay, well I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees. Let's make some soda bread. It's just about that time of year, you know, for soda bread. St. Patrick's Day tradition. I'm gonna take two tablespoons of butter, about, put it in a 10 and a half inch cast iron skillet, and put it right in the oven to preheat. While that's in the oven, I'm gonna dot some of this, uh, cut some of this uh, butter up so that so that later I can put it on top of the batter in the pan as I bake it. So I'm just going to cut this guy up into pieces like this. And later I'll put all these pieces on top like you might do with apple pie. All right, I'm going to put them in the fridge, actually. So now, I'm going to put all my wet ingredients in one bowl, all my dry ingredients in the other, and I've chosen a big bowl because I want to make sure that I have enough room to really stir quickly at the end. So I'm going to start with three cups of flour. And I'm only measuring, you know, Casually here. Call it three cups. I'm going to add about three quarters of a cup of sugar. You can add more or less, depending on how sweet you like it. A tablespoon of baking powder. Now, traditionally, soda bread wouldn't have baking powder. But I find I add a little bit and it helps. A teaspoon of baking soda, rather. A teaspoon of salt. And now I have these currants. I'm going to use these. But I've made the same thing with orange zest. Oh, you just zip, put the zest of an orange in with it instead. Now I've got a whisk to put this all, kind of mix this together. Now you know how soda bread works. In here I've put baking soda, and baking soda is alkaline, it's a, it's a base. And uh, well, next uh, in the wet ingredients I'll be adding buttermilk. Buttermilk is acidic a little bit and it causes a reaction like you've probably seen as a kid, you know, mixing baking soda and vinegar. Well, this is not quite as acidic as vinegar, but it causes, you know, a, a reaction that makes all the bubbles and gives us the rise. So the wet ingredients, one and three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. One, three quarters, I'm estimating. Maybe that's three quarters. I've done this recipe with chocolate chips. I've done it with uh, sesame seeds and almond extract or almond paste. It's delicious. Uh, with chocolate chips, it's just fantastic. Use brown sugar. Nobody would ever guess that it's a soda bread, you know. So uh, I'm just going to mix, uh, mix this guy up together here to break up these yolks and kind of blend this together a little bit. And right now, remember, the pan is heating in the oven. So right at the last, uh, after that's heated, after the pan is heated up, I'm going to quickly mix these two together, very quickly. Like you want to mix them in about 10 seconds or less. Because as soon as they mix, the, the carbon dioxide gas will start to form from the acid and the base, from the baking soda and the buttermilk. And it'll give, it'll, you'll see it start to rise as I pour it into the pan. Alright, here's the hot skillet with the butter crackling around in there. Alright. Okay, mix it real fast. And that's just about it. Now, 
there could even be some dry bits still left, but it's okay. I don't want to overmix it. How's that look? You know, I think I just want you to see what's going on in the oven if you can. Look at that thing rise up. See if we can't get a look at this. Oh, there it is. Let's get you a nice up close look at that. Look at that, and look at how much it rose up above the surface of the pan. This is this is big. This is a big thing that could probably serve at least twelve people, and maybe more. It's pretty good size. This is the size of a dinner plate. So. Uh, I'll come back in a little bit. I'm going to leave it in the pan for about 10 more minutes. And then, uh, then I'll take it out and maybe put it on a rack or just on a plate. But this pan will give it a crust around the edge that's almost like a cookie. It's so delicious. I can't wait for you to see it. Well, it's been just about five minutes. Just about five minutes now and uh, I'm going to show you how I get this from the hot skillet onto a plate and I just use a paper plate I flip it onto the paper plate from this skillet onto the paper plate and then back onto this plate and I'll show you how I do that I'll try to keep it all in view as I do it I put this right on top I flip it over onto my hand look at that and then I flip it back onto the plate like this and it smells so good. I can smell the butter. You can see the crust that it has on it. Oh, it's just, it's got a nice crust on it. And uh, I think you'll really love this. Your guests will love it. You can make it and serve it with tea or coffee. And I'm telling you, I love to do this with orange zest. Just zest an orange and put it in the same batter without the, without the currants. And you can even do two or you know, the zest of two oranges if you really like it flavorful and that also is very delicious so I'll be trying to cut into this in a little bit and you'll see this nice all these crusty pieces are so delicious thanks for watching